Hey nerds, this is Pam coming to you from Stationary Nerd. Today we're going to talk about how to use your bullet journal to do a brain dump. I should probably first explain what a brain dump is. A lot of people actually have a problem with the word dump. We're not in elementary school anymore. It's okay. You can use the word dump. It doesn't actually mean... Anyway, um, so to me a brain dump is very much like what happens when you have to clean out the junk drawer in the kitchen. It's the only way to clean it out. Honestly, the only way to clean it and organize it and get all of that crap out of the junk drawer is to just dump the whole thing out on the floor, sit down, sort it out, throw out the trash, um, organize the stuff that needs to go back in the drawer, take the stuff that goes somewhere else and put it away. So that's the way that you organize a junk drawer. And for me, a brain dump is very much like what it takes to get that junk drawer in order. First you have to dump out all the crap and then you have to sort it out, throw out the trash, categorize the rest, and then take action on the things that are left on the list. So that's pretty much the method that I've been using for the past 20 years or so. Why do I always tell you how many years I've been doing it? We really don't want to talk about my age, right? So anyway, I recently completed a brain dump. It took me about eight days to do and I filled up 10 pages in my bullet journal. So that's a little bit different than what you hear about in the bullet journal community where everybody just does a single page in their weekly layout or their monthly layout where they can just write random notes or thoughts or quotes uh, that they collect throughout the week. That's not what a brain dump is, at least not in my mind. To me, that's just kind of a it's just kind of a catch-all page, uh, a place to truly just put your notes and your thoughts or future tasks. Um, in my bullet journal, I have a page called Master Task List. So if I have something that I need to get done, but it doesn't need to be done right away, I just put it on the master list, and then when I'm creating the project list for the week, I'll go to my master list and pull off a couple of things that need to be done. I know it's time to do a brain dump when I start to get grumpy. Usually somebody else has to tell me that I'm being grumpy, but also I start to feel really overwhelmed. And um, you know that feeling that you get where you have so much stuff to do that you've just decided to not do any of it? Yeah, that's usually a sign that you need to sit down and start a brain dump. So that's how I was feeling a couple of weeks ago and I decided that I was going to document this process so that I could teach it to you guys. For me, a good brain dump uh, will last me about six months. I really only need to do a full brain dump about twice a year, sometimes three times a year, but mo lately it's really been about twice. And the reason that I can go so long between um, full brain dumps is because I have a daily routine of doing morning pages. If you're not familiar with morning pages, I highly recommend you take a look at the link that I'll leave below. Um, Julia Cameron is the author of The Artist Way. It's a book to help you um, discover and leverage your creativity. Um, there's a lot of different techniques that she goes over, but the one that I have really um, held on to is the concept of morning pages. The idea is first thing in the morning when you get out of bed, um, you write for 20 minutes or a certain number of pages. And the idea is that you're just clearing the crap out of your head first thing in the morning so that when you are finished you can start your day and you're clear and you have room for creativity. So I've been doing morning pages for about two and a half years now and I gotta tell you it has truly changed my life. Every morning I get up at about five o'clock. I feed the kitties. 
I make some coffee. And then I spend 20 minutes just writing. Um, most of the stuff that I write is complete nonsense and it's really just whatever's in my head and whatever needs to get out. Some of it's useful, some of it's not. Um, I don't worry about whether it is um, anything that I'll be able to use in the future or even that I want to read in the future. The whole concept is get it out of my head and get it down on paper so I don't have to process it any longer. And because I do that every morning, I don't have to worry so much about um, clearing the thoughts and the ideas out of my head in a weekly brain dump page or monthly brain dump page in my bullet journal. So instead, about twice a year, I can get away with doing a big brain dump and it gives me the space that I need to continue with my creative, um, creative projects. So the first step, step zero, is preparation. So number one, you need to make sure that you have the time clear on your calendar so that you can spend the next seven to 10 days truly dedicating your brain power to a brain dump. Um, and yes, seven to 10 days. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. But the next thing that I like to do is, um, there is a, an awesome list by David Allen. It's called the Trigger List. And it's, I will um, link this t for you in the uh, description below. But I just print a fresh copy of this and I go through, and I'm not sure if you can see this, but basically I um, highlight the things that are on this list that I feel like I need to be thinking about. I don't make any notes um, or I don't use this during the brain dump. I really just spend some time before I begin the process to go through the trigger list, underline the things that I know that I need to think about, and then I let my brain take care of the rest. Um, and then when I'm ready to start, um, I have um, blocked off several pages in my bullet journal or um, this is the first time I've actually done it in my bullet journal. Usually I, I do it on a completely separate notebook that's not used for anything else. Um, so make sure that you have the space so that it's all together in a single section of your bullet journal. Maybe just go all the way to the back and work your way forward or something like that. Um, and then on that first day, you are going to sit down and write a list of everything that's in your head and you're just going to keep writing until you don't have anything else to write about. So the key here is that it's not a journal entry. It is truly a bulleted list with as few words possible on each item of that list. So write three or four words just enough so that you can get the idea of what you're thinking and get it down on paper. And that when you go back to it, you'll understand what that means. The list is gonna be long, it doesn't matter. The list is going to be random and jumbled and all out of order, and that doesn't matter. In fact, do not categorize this list as you're writing it. Um, you are just writing a list down this paper down the page in order of what comes to your mind. So you're gonna have things next to each other that don't make any sense. You're gonna have a grocery list item next to the fact that you need to power wash the deck, next to the task of doing laundry or cleaning up the closet. All of those things are gonna come to your mind and as soon as it hits your brain, you need to write it down. And I highly recommend you do this with pen and paper rather than on the computer. There is a connection between your brain and your hand and motor skills that gives you a different kind of connection than when you're doing it at the computer. So definitely use um, pen and paper for this step. So that first day, you're gonna write until you can't write anymore. And sometimes it's gonna take 15 minutes. Sometimes it's going to take an hour. 
Um, I believe this last time my first uh, my first day's session lasted about an hour and I filled about three pages worth of stuff. Um, when you get to a point on the list where you're no longer able to come up with anything, that's fine. You're done for the day. So close the book and then go about your day. The next day, I actually like to set a timer. I set a timer for myself for 15 minutes and I write whatever is new, is new in my head the second day and I um, write until the timer goes off and then I shut the book. And then the next day I set the timer for 15 minutes and I write until my brain is empty and then I shut the book. So I do this every day for a week for about a week. Um, I think this time for me it ended up being about um, six days, six and a half days. Um, you will know when you're done when you start to repeat things that you know have already been written down. Up to this point you don't care if you are repeating things. Um, you're not actually thinking about what you're writing down or processing the things that you wrote down yesterday. You're just writing down what comes to your brain and moving on to the next thing. Yes, you're going to repeat stuff. Yes, you're going to write down complete nonsense that you know is trash and probably you just wasted energy writing that thing down. It's okay. Write it down anyway. Um, you are not going to censor yourself. If it comes to your brain, you write it down. If you think that, oh, that's a dumb thought, I'm not going to write that down. Write that thing down too. So once you get all the way to the end and you figure out that you have nothing else to put on paper, um, you'll kind of know when that, when that happens. You'll feel a lot better about the th the way that your brain is operating. You won't be as fuzzy, you won't be as overwhelmed, you won't be quite as stressed or <laughs> grumpy um, as you were at the beginning of the week. So at this point, when you decide that you are done, um, I write, I actually draw a line under the last bullet. Um, sometimes I actually write the word done or write the words the end. Um, but I definitely draw a line and then I shut the book. Um, and this is why you, uh, you might want to choose to use a completely different journal besides your bullet journal that you're using every day. Because the key here is to shut the book and put it in a drawer or somewhere that you're not going to see and leave it there for at least two days. Don't open the book. Just leave it in the drawer for two days. Um, and then just kind of go about your life. And you're going to feel, um, you're going to feel free and uh, clear headed. And you're going to know that all of that crap that has been come, you know, you've been carrying around for the last six months, all that stuff is on paper and it's safe. It's safe in that paper notebook and it's in the drawer and it's okay that it stays there for a couple of days without any attention. During the next couple of days, if you come up with anything else that needs to go on that list, do not open that notebook. Get another piece of paper and write the stuff down on a separate piece of paper or in a different notebook. Um, and you'll be able to add to that uh, once we get to the next step. But don't open the book and put more stuff on the list. Just grab another piece of paper or a three by five card, like I always have these around, um, and just write those things down. And then when we get to the next step, you can merge the two lists together. Okay, so now we're on to the review stage. So this is where you're going to actually read the list. So block off a couple of hours and um, review your list, which means literally read everything that you wrote down on that list. Um, you don't need to do anything with that just yet. Just read it 
and then as you're reading through, additional things are gonna come to mind. So write those things down at the bottom of the list underneath where you wrote that line that says the end. Um, add the additional things that, you, that come to mind as you're reading your list. And then once you kind of have an idea of what's on that list, now you need to figure out what your categories are. You can be broad here and there is no rule. Your categories are gonna be different than my categories and everybody else's. Um, so for me, I chose, um, actually, let me just open up my book here. So for me, I had, I figured out that I had um, several categories. Number one, everybody's gonna have a trash category. So just put that at the top of the list. I had house stuff, I had health and fitness stuff, I had financial stuff, I had um, work or my freelance business stuff, and then I also had stuff for Stationery Nerd because, you know, I'm always coming up with ideas for you guys. And then I also kept a miscellaneous category. So then I wrote myself a key and um, I went through with my markers because I pulled out some colored markers and I started just marking on the list. And then as I was going through, anything that was truly trash, like I, there's no reason for this to be on a list of any sort. And there's nothing that I need to do. It's just a piece of nonsense information that is in my brain and I need to just trash it. So that is when um, you're gonna just go through the list, categorize everything with a color code. And then you're going to, Jack, what are you doing? Hey, hey, you're in my space. All right, so now the next step is step number four, which is sorting and categorizing. So as you're going through and color coding everything, you're gonna start pulling those things off of the big list and putting them onto a secondary list. So I just created a big spread on the next page of the bullet journal um, where I had each category as a header and then I just started writing bullet or uh, bullet listed. <laughs> Jack is meowing at the squirrels. So once you have your secondary list started with each of the categories, you're just gonna go through the big brain dump list and pull off bullet pointed um, items and put them onto the other list. Now the secondary list is going to become your action list. So think about it as if you were creating a task list that you're gonna work off of for the next several months. There is no reason to think that you need to get all this stuff done right away. Um, you're just going to put it on the list so that you know that it's an action item that you need to take. And then over the course of the next couple of months, three or four or five months, you're gonna just slowly go to that list and you're gonna start checking things off. Um, and you're just gonna keep it bookmarked and get, just go back to it. Um, and eventually you're gonna go back one day and realize that you have actually finished all the stuff on that list or a good majority of it. So I just, I just want to make sure that you understand the difference between a brain dump and something like a brainstorming session. So a brain dump is actually taking information that's in one place and putting it into another place so that you can retrieve it at a later time. So it's information that already exists. Whereas a brainstorm is um, creating a list of ideas that didn't exist before. So coming up with ideas on um, how to solve a specific problem or what you want to do to plan a birthday party for a child or a friend. Um, so a brainstorming list is where you're creating new stuff that you didn't know before. A brain dump list is where you're taking stuff that you already know that's already in your head and putting it down on paper. So, um, okay, so that's pretty much the process. Um, I feel like I've talked a lot. 
All right, well, clearly Jack wants me to end this video and uh, pay more attention to him. So I'm gonna wrap this up now. Um, I'd love to talk to you a bit about the brain dump process that you're using and if this is something that you think would work for you. So drop me a comment below and let's have a chat about what's going on <laughs> with your brain dump process. Um, and if there's anything that I haven't covered or is not really clear, um, you can either head over to the, the website and read the article there or feel free to ask me anything in the comments and I will jump in and do what I can to help you. So. Anyway, that's all I've got for now. I will talk to you later. Do all the things, leave a comment, share it with a friend, um, like and subscribe and everything else. So until next time, stay nerdy. I'll talk to you later. Bye.